Okay, you know the first person to walk on the moon, right? Neil Armstrong. But do you know the first person to drive on the moon? That was Dave Scott, 1971, Apollo 15. He was wearing his NASA-issued Omega Speedmaster, but halfway through the mission, the crystal pops off. Come on, Omega. So he has to go fetch his personal watch, which is a prototype Belova had gifted to him. And that was the watch that he supposedly wore when he became the first person to operate the lunar rover. So this watch, first watch to drive on the moon. Hey guys, I'm Max and this is WatchCrunch. WatchCrunch.com is a one-stop shop for your daily watch fix. From watch news to wrist shots, from discussions to watch meetups, you can find your community here. Despite the great story of how it saved the Omega Speedmaster's butt in Apollo 15, I've always been like a distant admirer of the Belova Lunar Pilot. Content on being on the sidelines looking in because I've bought big watches before hoping that it would look fine on my wrist and it's never worked out well. And with the original 45 millimeter watch, I knew better than to try that on my six and a half inch wrist. However, with the newly updated 43, I was feeling lucky again and this time, Oh, it's good. I chose to go with the more colorful blue on white panda variant, which I will unofficially call the Snoopy edition. Yes, you can get the black dial if you really want something resembling the original Moonwatch, but as I already have a Speedmaster, I wanted something that was more colorful. First, let's get sizing out of the way, because I know a lot of you are wondering, is 43 actually small enough? Well, I'm glad to report that despite a lug to lug of 50, the lugs have rounded unobtrusive profiles. And I think I can just pull it off without overhanging lugs and even maybe getting some bracelet from the top down view. This is helped by skinny 13 millimeter thickness by chronograph standards, allowing this watch to sit squat on your wrist without wobble. The aforementioned bracelet was a surprise. Usually at this price point, I feel like bracelets are afterthoughts and you sometimes just want to throw them away right out of the box but this one punches above its weight it's a president style with polished center sections there is no taper which is kind of a shame but its heft really does a good job at balancing the watch head and the two sides they come together seamlessly at a butterfly deploying clasp and the link there is signed with a belova tuning fork the inlinks are also a convenient 20 mil wide which means you can swap straps to your heart's content Belova even included a blue leather NATO in the box. Now it's not a traditional NATO as it still uses embedded quick release spring bars. Part of the reason why I went with the Snoopy colorway was for the dial. There's a not so subtle sandblasted texture that may as well be a diorama of the lunar surface from orbit. A wonderful texture that really pops when the light hits it at an angle. The sunken subdials have their own circular iridescent pattern, and there is a recessed minute track, giving the style additional visual depth. And instead of an outboard tachymeter scale like the Omega Speedmaster, the Belova has a blue ring that's embedded underneath the sapphire crystal. So no more worrying about that lip catching on things or collecting dust. The markers, their sticks applied with a generous dollop of loom. There's a pleasant symmetry to this dateless design, and you just get a sense that Belova really kind of swung for the fences with this colorway, all the while keeping a level of restraint that retains the professional nature of this watch. To me, this was like the most hotly anticipated watch so far in 2023, and I know I was refreshing that webpage repeatedly on the night of the drop. Now, at the time of this video, Belovo is offering a 10% discount on their website, as well as a free gift in a small watch roll. So it makes the price a little more tolerable. Now guys, please drop a like for this video. Consider subscribing for more reviews like this. Now, I can already see it in the comments. People are gonna say, should have made it even smaller. A 40 millimeter would be amazing. And I agree. But here's why 43 was the way to go here. 43, it's the historically accurate size to the watch that Dave Scott wore. Just like 42 was the right size for the Speedy Pro. By downsizing to 43 from 45 with these compact lugs, it really broadens the appeal to the slim wrist gain while still respecting this watch's history. 
I've been lifting some heavy stuff with my trainer for the last few months and I'm up like a couple of micro adjustments on my bracelet. So you can also consider this an incentive to get in the gym. So I'm coming day and night. I mean, it's terrific, right? <laughs> now, if you order this watch from Belova's website, they'll even size it for you, making you feel that much more like a real astronaut. The case of the Lunar Pilot is pretty much all polished. Not a big deal because from the top down view, there's not much case to see beyond the lugs. The Snoopy has these contrasting blue pushers and they're not the pump pushers of normal chronographs. These are like triangular rails that pivot at their small end, making engaging with them a uniquely tactile experience. And they just look cool. It's another small detail that adds to this watch's unique aesthetic. Now, some quartz chronos can feel mushy, but rest assured, the Lunar Pilot's pushers have a positive engagement. I mean, it's not mechanical like a Valju or something, but it's still firm with good feedback, more akin to like a smartphone's volume rocker. A push-pull crown is signed with the Belova logo, and the watch is rated at 50 meters of water resistance. Belova's high-frequency quartz vibrates at 262 kilohertz, which is eight times faster than your standard crystal, allowing this watch to be accurate to 10 seconds per year and needing a new battery once every four years. Another party trick is the three o'clock subdial. Once the chrono is engaged for the first 30 seconds, this subdial will enthusiastically whirl around, allowing a timing down to 1 20th of a second. Resetting the mechanism causes the chrono hand to spin all the way, completing its trip around the dial. A real fun fidget spinner during long meetings. A little known fact is that NASA actually used Belova's timekeeping tech up until the 1970s. So let's give the surprisingly good Lunar Pilot a crunch score. This watch really shines in the design and history department, as we've noted. This is no longer a poor man's Speedmaster, in my opinion. The Belova has its own spacefaring lore, and it's very much now its own watch. Yes, it's a couple hundred more than the old 45 mil watch, but $800 is still a hell of a value proposition for such a complete watch. And I say complete because it doesn't really have any obvious shortcomings. No longer any major reasons for you to stay away. The fit and finish is what you would expect at this price. The bracelet is surprisingly good and the movement isn't just your run of the mill quartz either. So I'd say if you're on the fence, it's time to get this watch. Whether in the classic black or the blue Snoopy, I promise you won't be disappointed. Guys, what do you think about the Lunar Pilot? Can we call this a moon watch? Share your opinions with me on watchcrunch.com. I'll put a link in the pinned comments below. As always, stay crunchy. I'll see you in the next one.